Hey y'all, so the customer says we really like that design on the left, but we really want it to be just kind of some grays and no brown in it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so um, I'm going to stick with uh, a couple different black colors for uh, the undertones. And then I'm going to uh, add some, uh, it's an aluminum, or no, it's a, uh, a dark silver metallic uh, to give it that silver type look. And so that's what I'm doing now is I just want to get kind of my base color set down. And honestly, I really wasn't quite sure. This is my first practice board, first sample board for the customer uh, to see what I can come up with. So my mind is rolling right now with what kind of design and how am I going to go about, you know, kind of doing this. That's the silver that I put on there. And anytime I use silver, silver can very quickly take over. So with my gloved hand, actually, I sprayed some isopropyl alcohol on my gloved hand. And uh, again, just to start off with giving me a base, I'm just melding uh, all of those colors together. And you're going to see a lot of swirl marks and finger marks and things like that. And I guess that's the glory of Stone Coat Epoxy, having such a long open time. And one of the hardest things for me to learn when I started doing this was be patient. Uh, meld the colors out like what I'm doing now and then give it time to soften, give it time to move around a little bit and give that design uh, a little bit of a chance to develop uh, before you go on to your next step. So this was this was kind of mission accomplished, I guess, of what I was looking for. Um, I do need to get some white in there because the customer does have a white tile for a backsplash. So I need to get a little bit of white to uh, kind of help tie in with that. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I don't want to get too carried away with the white. I just want to be able to have some in there. But the white can also get swallowed up very quickly in the black. So adding just a little bit of white, I'm just going to very, very lightly meld that in. And then I'm going to take a look at it and see, do I have too much white? Uh, do I have just enough that's kind of, kind of peekaboo through and just enough to kind of tie in with that tile backsplash? And, uh, and that looks pretty good the way it is. Also, I know if I, if I put too much white in there, then along with that black, I'm going to end up with too much gray. And I don't want to do that either. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here is to get a balance of having an amount of gray in there, having some white in there, and then also having some of that black kind of show up through too. And Really important, as you can see what I'm doing here, is you just kind of step back, you take a look, and I was wondering if I added a little bit more of the black, and that's what I did on that upper left corner right there, what would that look like? So I decided that I'd, I'd like that look, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the silver, I'm going to add a little bit more of the white, and then I'm going to meld that in and see what that looks like. Once again, that's my sample that I'm going to try to replicate or emulate, if you will, but there's nothing brown in the customer's kitchen. So uh, they wanted to keep everything kind of the, the neutral colors. Uh, the cabinets is, are going to be painting, um, I think it's called grayish, um, which it, basically it's gray. And that was the reason for all this. So I'm adding more colors in there, layering colors, if you will. And then again, I'm going to very lightly meld that and then step back just a little bit and kind of see what that's going to look like. Always keep just a little bit of resin left in your cups, at least I do anyway, in case I need to add a little bit more, uh, especially on something that I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Um, what about you? Leave me, leave, me, um, leave me a comment. Doesn't that kind of look like a hot mess at this point? <laughs> but I'm going to get a torch over the top of it. I'm going to heat that up, and I'm going to give that a chance. And I know that it's going to soften up over the next... Oh, 10, 15 minutes. It's going to soften up. Those finger lines that you see in there are going to kind of go away. Uh, I want to tilt it a little bit and see how that's going to kind of move. And then what step do I want to take next to, to, to bring out that look that I'm after to match the tile? That's what I'm after. So I thought, okay, what if I take some white spray paint and some black spray paint and very lightly fog the surface and then immediately hit it with some isopropyl alcohol? Eh, it was a thought. Let's see what happens. So I've got my white, got my black, and then we'll hit it with the spritz in. Okay, that's kind of looking like what I was after. 
Maybe a little bit some bigger drops in some places. And again, I'm not looking for cells. I'm just looking for how that alcohol is going to break up the spray paint. Okay, that looks cool. So then I decided, well, to get some fracture lines in there, I'm going to take my tongue depressor. And I've got a couple different lengths of tongue depressors. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to chop that. And I'm going to chop it early when the epoxy is very fluid. So those lines kind of flow out a little bit. But it ended up, ah, it was a really cool effect. I think I'm getting there. Ooh, man. So, oh, goodness. One thing that is really cool, if I pick up the stick and then kind of pull it off to the side as I lift it up, I realized that what that was doing was putting some very tiny little micro fractures that were coming off each one of those fracture lines. And oh my gosh, that ended up looking so cool. Now, I think I'm onto something. But it creates some little hairline fractures. Oh, that is really cool. Uh-oh, I dragged it. We'll see if that softens back up a little bit. So as always, it always looks different in person than it does in pictures and videos. But putting this up to, and looking at the customer sample compared to what this turned out and how this turned out, I was really, really happy with it. And all in all, it was, it was not a difficult design to create. There wasn't that many steps to it. Uh, but chopping it in with the, um, the, the tongue depressors really made all the difference. That and also fogging it with the white and black. And it was a very, very light fog, but it gave it just a little bit more of the gray color. And the white is peekabooing through just enough to really help tie in, I guess, with uh, their tile. So all in all, I was really happy with the way it turned out. And the white, actually, the white spray paint kind of uh, gave me some of the gray that I was looking for because I really didn't want to get it too dark. But then by pushing the popsicle stick down there, that brought up some of the black from down below. Uh, that looks really cool. And on this, I probably used just under three ounces per square foot. Wow, I really like that. That is very cool. All right, we're just gonna kind of let that meld out for a little bit and uh, we'll see how that softens up over time. So here's the final result. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. Did we nail it? I think it looks pretty good. Customer loves it. Uh, once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for upcoming tutorials and we will see you on the next video. Take care, y'all.